So recently I made a video on my favorite dashboard and in that I used Mushroom UI to modify Home Assistant to make it look nicer and I made some little tweaks to fine tune it the way I like. And I mentioned that video that I would do a follow up video and explain how I did all of that. So that's this video. And this is gonna be a little more advanced than a bunch of other tutorials I'm gonna have on this channel. So if it seems a little overwhelming, don't worry, I'll have more things for beginners and everything in between in the future. So there are two parts to the Mushroom UI. One are the cards, and that's the main thing that you will need for the sliders and basically all the cards that you'll need to add to your dashboard. And then there is Mushroom Themes. And this one is optional because with the new updated Home Assistant, you don't really need it, but I would still recommend installing it because you can make those finite tweaks to the colors and the spacing and all of that. Now, to install it, you use hacks, and I'm not gonna go into a lot of details in this video on how to install hacks and all of that. It's Home Assistant Community Store, super useful. If you don't have it already, highly recommend installing that, but you just search in the front end for mushroom, you click install, I would install the theme and the regular mushroom. Now, before we jump in and make all of the little style changes for the theme, we are gonna want to enable it first because if you don't do this, then it's not gonna work. So you get three options basically. In your configuration.yaml, you could add all the style in that file, which I don't recommend. It's gonna clutter everything up. You could add another file called like themes.yaml, for example, and reference that. But if you've installed the mushroom themes, it's gonna add another directory with the name themes, I believe. So you're gonna to wanna to do that third option where you point your configuration file to that directory to reference all of those theme files. So you can see mine right there, my configuration.yaml. I have that front end, themes, and then the directory that's called themes. So I'm sure I could come up with some better names, but let's just keep it easy. Then after you add that, you just need to restart Home Assistant for that to be enabled. Then you can see I have a folder named themes, click on that and mushroom and then mushroom square.yaml. So that will make it so I can edit this theme and you can enable it. I'm gonna show you how to enable it in the UI. So there are two options you have. You can set the theme manually for each specific device by going to the profile and then selecting the theme from the dropdown. And this is good if you wanna set a theme for a specific dashboard or just, you know, someone has a certain preference, but if you wanna set it for all the devices by default, then you'll need to go to developer tools, services, and then type in theme and you'll see front end set theme. Select that, choose the theme from the dropdown, and then you can select it as dark mode or light or whatever you want, and then call service, and that will set the default theme if that is the one selected in that profile. So in this theme file, they have a few things already listed, but you could go to the GitHub page and see a ton of other things that you could change. I'm not gonna change a whole lot. The one big thing that I changed was this RGB state light. For example, I have some ceiling lights with a smart switch and they're daylight white, they're not orange, they're more of like a true white color. And so, the Mushroom UI was showing that as an orange color, didn't like that, so I just added this little extra line right here to make that slider white. You can make a bunch of little tweaks. One of them that people might need to add is this little Home Assistant card border color, and that just kind of gets rid of it. Recently, Home Assistant added that. They added a border color. I don't like that. It's, it's just too many little lines and everything like that, so to disable that in the file, I'm gonna add Home Assistant card border color and then make it transparent so you won't see it anymore. So once you add that, you click save. And then if you go over and check it out, you're gonna see that it doesn't update it right away. And that's because you have to do one more step. And I wish Home Assistant would make this easier or less confusing. Basically, they're like, call this service to reload the front end themes. You go over to the developer tools and go to services and then you look up home assistant front end reload themes and you just select that and then you click call service so that will call the reload theme service 
And then when you go back, you don't even have to refresh. All those little border lines are now gone. Even if you're not using Mushroom, you can make your own theme and then you can add those styles to your dashboard. Now that we got all the themes out of the way, it's time to start modifying the dashboard to use Mushroom or some of the modern UI to make it look a little nicer. And even if you're not using Mushroom, Home Assistant recently updated to have these things called tile cards. And basically it looks similar to the Mushroom UI. I think the guy that created Mushroom UI now works for Home Assistant. So I think that's kind of where that's coming from. But I'm gonna be updating this dashboard that I use for my theater room. I haven't updated it yet. It still has kind of the, the old look to it. So I'm gonna walk you through what it takes to update this quickly. So first you would come up here to edit dashboard. You'll notice that there's two main columns and I always organize all my dashboards by vertical stacks. And that way you can keep everything organized and show in the order that you want it to. If you don't do that, Home Assistant will kind of just stack everything and it could put it wherever and it's not very organized. So when you do it like this, the top left will always show up first if you're using your mobile phone. I'm gonna to go to this first vertical stack and I'm gonna be editing this whole little section down here. So you can see all the little switches and everything for the lights. I'm gonna be recreating that either using Mushroom UI or the tiles, like you can do whatever you want. If I did this just through the UI, it would take a while because you, you click plus, you search tile, and then I'm gonna do light, theater, main light. So you can see down here that it created that little tile card. I'm gonna be replacing all the lights right up here. If I just added, um, it would just be stacked, but I kind of want to utilize the most space possible. So I'm going to put all the little light switches right next to each other. So I'm going to type in horizontal stack and add that. And then in each one of these little thing, I'm going to add, I'm just going to use tile. I'm going to use the new home assistant tile, light, theater, main light. So right now it just looks like the same, but then if you add another tile, and then you add light, theater, console, you'll see that the lights now are next to each other. So that's taking up a little less space than if they were kind of stacked on top of each other, since it just wasted, you know, screen real estate that I just want to take advantage of. But as you can see, that kind of takes a while. If I'm clicking the plus, I'm using the UI for all of it. So I could do all of this with just pure YAML, like figuring out all the syntax and everything, but that's kind of confusing because, you know, I don't, I'm not like an expert on, on YAML. So what I'll usually end up doing is adding one or two elements or cards, and then I'll go down here to show code editor. And what this does is it shows you the YAML code just for this little section. It's not for, the entire page or for the entire dashboard, because this whole dashboard is like 2,600 lines of YAML code. So it can get kind of confusing as you're scrolling through everything. But this one, as you can see, is only 77. And it's pretty easy to see what's going on here. So I added a horizontal stack with two cards and they're both tiles. So now if I want to duplicate that, all I have to do is just copy and paste this thing right here. And then you'll see it added two more right down here. And so that's the way I like to edit it is I like to add a little bit with the UI, kind of get all the syntax done for me. And then I do a lot of copy and pasting with YAML so it can go much faster. Let me show you here. So I just need a theater floor. I'm gonna do that. So I'm just pulling up and looking up here and then um, I'm gonna add another light, the snacks light strip. So I'm gonna add that one. So there you go, you can just see, I just copy and pasted from what I was using before and I've created four new tiles that are kind of stacked next to each other. So now I'm just deleting a bunch of the lights that were in the old view. So they're not gonna be duplicates with the new ones. Basically out with the old, in with the new. So I'm using those tile cards, but obviously I could use those mushroom ones as well. 
The mushroom ones you can configure and fine tune a little bit better, but I do like these tile ones and that the default state is just, you can see more of the light by just clicking on the name of it. And then you can toggle it by clicking on the icon, which you can change in the actions. You can change what happens when you click on the name or when you click on the icon. So I like that you also have that option as well. So yeah, I think that's the best way to set up all the defaults in the UI and then just copy and paste that YAML for all the other devices. That's gonna save so much time when you're just redoing a big, huge dashboard. And hopefully this video was helpful. I'm gonna to try to get better at these tutorials and everything. So let me know if you have any questions or suggestions down in the comments. Thanks for watching.